ain't it the truth? What I can't do is cook. There ain't a thing that's better to eat than a fresh caught fish. Then if I don't get my hands on some, I'll die. But it's all too much of a bother to go fishing myself. So I was wondering if you could do something about it for me. Just tell me where you caught it. The king's chief counselor and friend, the second son of the Earl of Halki, spoke with a deep, gruff voice and wore his hair in a braid. His name was Machizuki Tauya. His appearance wasn't particularly distinctive. He was neither tall nor short. His build was average, and his features were unremarkable. In other words, he wasn't the sort of man to stand out in a crowd. But he had a knack for always speaking his mind, and he never hesitated to speak frankly to those who had a responsibility to serve the king. His blunt manner was well suited for his station, and he was one of the people most trusted by the king himself. And yet, the king's trust was not unfounded. He was a man who knew how to be both decisive and compassionate. He was also a man who understood when to speak up and when to keep silent, a man who knew how to exercise restraint when necessary. However, even when it came to such matters, he was not particularly humble or meek. He was known for being blunt and honest. He wasn't someone who would say whatever he felt like saying. As the person entrusted with the king's safety, he had the right to make decisions on the king's behalf. But as the person closest to the king himself, he had to show respect for the king's wishes, and that included showing deference toward the other advisers, even those who outranked him. Thus, Though he did not hesitate to speak his mind, he also understood the need for tact when it came to doing so. After the king had died and the crown prince had been born, he had continued serving as the king's advisor, while also serving as the guardian of the crown prince. Of course, this wasn't just some self-imposed position, he'd been chosen by his majesty's mother, the former queen, and she'd made her intentions very clear. She had wanted her beloved son to be raised by a man of great character a man who would serve as his example and set the proper tone for the royal family, a man who would help ensure that the prince would grow into a fine and wise ruler. She had given him her blessing, and it was with an understanding that he'd accepted the responsibility of raising her child. As the one responsible for ensuring the prince's safety, he'd also taken on the responsibility of making sure that the prince had access to the right education, and so, as a young boy, he'd made sure that his ward had access to books, learning from them as well as any tutor the palace could afford. He'd continued doing so after he'd come of age. He'd done what he could to teach the prince how to think clearly, to use reason as a tool for analyzing things, and how to use his head rather than his heart when it came to making decisions. Of course, all this was being carried out on the sly. No one was supposed to know that the young prince was being taught by a man who had ranked him. The king had specifically ordered that he was not to be told anything about this matter. In fact, there was no record of Tuya being in the royal palace at all during those years. He'd always come to meet the prince in secret, usually staying in a room within the prince's quarters. His primary duty had always been to ensure the prince's safety. As a result, he'd always taken special care to make sure he never exposed himself to unnecessary danger. As the guardian of the crown prince, he'd taken steps to ensure that there were people watching over the boy at all times. It was only recently that he'd been made aware of the existence of a certain organization, the Black Foxes. They'd been responsible for guarding the prince for years now, and they performed their duties admirably. Taoya was now fully aware of their existence, though he hadn't yet spoken with them directly. Still, he found it interesting that the prince had managed to recruit so many people without anyone else being the wiser. Not only that, but it seemed that there had been no need for a bodyguard at all. Not only were the black foxes taking care of his charge, but they'd even been able to secure a safe location for them to stay in. He'd always been taught that one should be wary of strangers. After all, they might have hidden agendas. However, it seemed that the black foxes were different. Their intentions appeared pure and true. It was precisely because of this that Toya had begun thinking of them as friends. If he couldn't trust them, well, it would mean that there was no one he could trust at all. Thus, his current course of action was to trust them completely. He couldn't allow himself to be suspicious of people whose only purpose was to protect his charge. That would only lead to tragedy. Even so, he knew full well that he had no way of confirming their intentions. He couldn't see into their hearts. There was only one thing he could do. Rely on their words and actions.